Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at linear systems word problems, or in other words, word problems that you have to solve using linear systems. It's kind of challenging concept, but we'll get into it, and I'll show some of the really common word problem types that teachers will use and show you exactly how to set them up and solve it. So we are going to talk about word problems and taking a word problem and making an equation, and then we're going to actually solve the system when we have a couple of equations from a word problem. This is the type of word problem we're talking about. An art auction is having an event. They want to make $2,975. If adult tickets are $750 and student tickets are $550 and the event will have exactly 450 people, how many adults and students will need to attend to make that exact amount? So this is the type of question you see. You'll see it in different ways, and I'm going to show actually three different examples in this video. But the first thing you need to do when you get this type of question is to make two equations out of the information. The first equation in this case is the people attending, and the second equation is the actual income that you're earning. The people attending is actually the easiest one to make. We assume that all the people attending 450 are either adults or students okay there's exactly 450 there are some adults some students so we know if we add the students plus the adults or the adults plus the students we're going to equal 450 that's our first equation pretty straightforward this one here will be the easiest one to identify in all of our questions it's also the simplest when we're looking at income then we have to look for all the pieces of, in this case, money. So there's a $2,975. There's the adult tickets, $750, and the students' tickets are $550. So this equation is going to be a little bit more complicated. What we need to do is first multiply $750 times the number of adults that are coming. So it's $750 for every adult. That's the income that we're getting from adults. We add that to 550 times the number of students. Okay, so we've got 5.5 times the number of students, and that total amount is going to equal $2,975. That's our second equation. So we're going to actually solve this problem in a little bit. But first, I want you to practice this process of writing out two equations from a word problem. Because honestly, that's the hardest part of the entire thing. And if you get that down, you're going to be in good shape. So we're going on to a new word problem. And what I want you to do is pause the video and try to write two equations. The first one will be the number of candies that are bought. And the second one will be the cost. They're going to be formatted almost exactly like the previous question. So take a minute, look at that, and then come back and see the, the equations that I write. Go. Hey, welcome back. So the candies that were bought, I find the information here. There's a total of 642 candies. Some are blue and some are red. So I'm going to add them together. Red plus blue is equal to 642. I realize I didn't read the question out loud, but you guys can read. Um, the next question is the cost. So in this question, we're given that in the end, I got a bill for $15.37 for buying red and blue candies. The blue candies cost um, three cents and the red candies cost two cents. So all of the money pieces are the ones I'm going to use for this second equation. So three cents times the blue candies plus two cents times the red candies will equal a total of $15.37. That's the equation that you would get. Now, if you switch these numbers around, like if you had blue plus red equals 642, that's fine. If you had um, the 0.2 R first and the 0.03 B second, that's absolutely fine too, as long as they're added together to give you $15.37. All right. 
So now we're going to go back and actually solve those two equations. Then we're going to do a third or solve those two questions. Then we're going to do a third and final question where we identify the equations and solve all at one time. All right, let's go back to our original question, the one with um, the adults and kids going to an art auction. We have our two equations. These are the steps that you're going to do once you have your equations to solve, and you'll follow these same steps every single time. Step one, you isolate a variable. You can do that with any variable in either equation. I'm going to recommend this one because it'll make your life easier, and I'm here to help. So let's, let's do this the easy way. Isolating a variable just means you're getting a variable by itself on one side of the equal sign. So to do that with this, I would need to subtract s from both sides of the equation. a is equal to 450 minus s. You can't join together the 450 and the s. They're not like terms, but that's an equation where you have a isolated by itself. And now what we can do is substitute that in for a over here. And I'll show you what that does. First off, it changes the equation to make it look a little bit more complicated. The only thing we changed was that 7.5 times a becomes 7.5 times 450 minus s. Everything else stays the same. But what this does for us is it gives us an equation with just one variable. All I have in there is the letter S, which means I can solve and say, what is the value for that letter S? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We have to do some multiplying here where we multiply 7.5 times both terms inside the parentheses. That's called the distributive property. 7.5 times 450 gives us 3,375. And 7.5 times negative s gives us negative 7.5 s. Everything else stays exactly the same. Copying, pasting is really easy at this point. Now I'm going to join together like terms. So I'm going to get all the s's onto the left side of the equation, all the numbers on the right side of the equation. To do that, I subtract 300 or 3,375 from both sides of the equation. And then I subtract, or I add, I guess, negative 7.5s plus 5.5s, which gives me negative 2s on the left. On the right side of the equation, I have negative 400. So we're simplifying things now. Now I, to get the letter s or the variable s by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, which gives me s is equal to 200. This is an important time to check and see whether you understand what the equation's asking. The equation's asking about how many adults and how many students attend this event. So you shouldn't have a decimal answer, you shouldn't have a fraction answer, and you shouldn't have a negative answer. You can't have a negative number of people attending and you can't have half a person attending. All right, even if the person's really short, we don't call them half a person. So you should get a nice even number for this and we do. All right, so there are 200 students attending. Now we need to use this equation to find out how many adults are attending because it says right there, adults are equal to, and it tells you. So let's just use that equation. That'll make it easier. 450 minus 200, that tells us that we have 250 adults. 250 adults, 200 students, there's 450 people total. That's what we wanted. So we've got a pretty good answer here. All right. And that's the, the steps that you're going to follow. I know this is taking a little bit of time because these questions are kind of tough. Let's go on and solve the candy question. So you're at a store. You're buying 642 candies. Um, how many of each did you get? I'm going to solve it the same way. In fact, I'd like you to try solving it the same way. Try first isolating a variable and then substituting into the equation and see what you get. Try it out. Three, two, one, go. Hopefully you tried that out and you paused for a little bit. I'm going to show you this one. And again, I'm going to go through it a little quicker than I did on the previous because you've already done it. You don't want to sit there and watch me explain every step of a question you've already done. Step number one, isolate my variable. I'm going to pick R 
because it's just easier. What I end up with is that r is equal to 642 minus b. Then I substitute that right into the equation where I see the letter r. Perfect. Everything else in the equation stays the same. Now I'm going to use the distributive property. I'm going to multiply 0 0.02 times 642 and times negative b, and this is what I get. In my next step, I will subtract $12.84 from both sides of the equation, and I'll join together the, the b's. I have 0.03b minus 0.02b, which gives me 0.01b. And when I subtract the money amounts, I'm ending up with $2.53 over there on the right side of the equation. I'll divide both by 0.1. For my final answer, that B is equal to 253. That means I bought 253 blue candies. That's what the B represents. Again, you're not going to get a half of a candy, and you're not going to get a negative candy. So that's a good trick. If you're thinking about what you're solving for, you should be able to recognize you should have a nice, clean number at the end of this step. Now we're going to figure out how many red candies we get by doing a quick subtraction to tell us that we have 389 red candies, 253 blue candies. That's the way we solve it, done and done. Our final question, we're going to do both steps together. We're first going to write out those two equations, and then we're going to isolate the variable and solve. If you're feeling extremely confident, pause right now and try doing all of that together. If you're not feeling 100% confident, that's okay. Let's work through some of this together. First off, we're going to write two equations. You know, first off, I'm going to read the question. How about that? Jim just finished counting all his money from his piggy bank, and he had $7.10. Before he could split up the coins, his brother came into his room and messed up all the piles. If Jim's 53 coins were all quarters and dimes, how many of each did he have? This type of question is very common. They're called coin questions. They come up all the time. It's a really great one for us to use, and I'll show you why in just a second. So first off, let's identify the coins. We've got quarters and dimes and a total of 53 coins. So if we add them together, our first equation will look like this. Quarters plus dimes equals 53. Great. The second equation that talks about the amounts is actually a little bit tricky. We have the total amount of $7.10, but we're never told each quarter is worth this much and each dime is worth that much. But quarters are worth 25 cents. Dimes are worth 10 cents. That's how much their money is worth. So we actually have two pieces of information given just by saying it's a dime. First off, it's one of the coins. Second off, it's worth 10 cents. The quarter, it's one of the coins, and it's worth 25 cents. So coin questions are extra challenging because they're hiding a lot of information inside of a single word, dime or quarter or nickel or penny. All right. So let's write out this equation. First off, dimes are worth 0 0.10. So it's 0 0.10 times the number of dimes you have, or 10 cents, right? Plus 0.25 times the number of quarters you have, and that will give you a total of $7.10. This is your second equation. So you have two equations there written out for you. Now we're going to move on to step number two and three. We're going to solve this bad boy. So I have our two equations written down there. I've shrunk down the, the font, but kept the question so that you can take a look at it and reference it whenever you need. Step number one is that you will isolate your variable. I would personally isolate Q because it's just a matter of subtracting D from both sides of the equation. Now we're going to substitute in our value for Q right there, and it'll look like this. Okay. I know I'm going a little bit quick. This is our third question together. If you need to pause at any time, please do it. All right, now I'm going to multiply 0.25 
times 53 and 0.25 times negative d. That's what I end up with. Everything else stays the same. I'm going to get all my numbers onto the left or the right side of this equation and all my letters on the left side of the equation by subtracting 13.25 from both sides of the equation and joining together those like terms of 0.1d minus 0.25d. Notice we have two d's, so they are like terms. I can join them together. So let's do that. What I end up with is negative 0.15d is equal to negative 6.15. Now at this point, you might be like, hey, Mr. Buffington, there's a bunch of decimals and there's a bunch of negatives. And you said that we're not going to have decimals and negatives. And you're right. The next step should get rid of all of that. Let's see if it does. Let's divide both sides by negative 0.15 and we see d is equal to positive 41. Incredible. With all of those decimals and negatives, we still end up with a nice, clean, whole number. There are 41 dimes. Let's use this equation to do some quick subtraction and find out that we do have 12 quarters. 12 quarters, 41 dimes. That equals 53 total coins. And if you add them up, you'll get $7.10. Jim, next time. Lock your door so your little brother doesn't knock over your pile of coins. All right, some things to keep in mind. First off, you write out the two equations. You isolate one variable, and then you substitute and solve. Those are consistently going to be the, quest, the steps for solving this type of question. I know this video is a little bit longer, but I wanted to do several examples. I hope it was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.